What is it that separates average guitarists from world-class guitarists? Is it technique? Is it tone? Is it feel? There is one big thing, in my opinion, that really separates the masters from the plebs. And that, my friends, is of course mastery of phrasing. Phrasing is how a guitar player presents their notes and licks within their music. In essence, it's essentially the concept of how notes are played, rather than what mm. notes are played. I like to think about it as the process of manifesting the music you hear in your head onto the fretboard. Phrasing is an incredibly difficult subject to teach because it's something so abstract and so subjective. Every single goddamn guitarist on the planet has their own special, unique musical voice inside of them, and thusly, their own unique way of phrasing. So it doesn't really make too much sense to go super hard on trying to tell someone exactly how they should be phrasing. Because at the end of the day, right, the whole idea is that it comes from inside you and not from your guitar teacher. But what I can do is to give you some very useful pointers on how best you can hone your musical voice up here and translate it down here. So, if there's one single thing that I want you guys to take away from this lesson, it's that phrasing is simply just musical sentences. And, as such, you can make a direct comparison between phrasing on guitar and speaking. Compare these two sentences, for example. I don't really like baked beans because they taste weird and make me poop all the time. One cannot even begin to describe the utmost adoration one holds for the fruit that has, has the moniker Big beans! So as you just heard, the first sentence was very, very monotone, flat, and not particularly engaging. But the second one was a lot more dynamic and colourful. And the exact same thing can also be applied to guitar phrasing. Again, the first one was really monotone and boring, but the second one was a lot more dynamic, exciting, and engaging. But what exactly is it about the second example that makes it more interesting and engaging? And actually, it's not as complicated as you may think. You can essentially just boil phrasing down to two simple elements. Call and response, and rhythmic variation. So, when you're engaged in a conversation with someone, unless you're talking with a complete chatterbox who won't shut up, there's a continual exchange of ideas, right? You say something, then the other person responds to that, and then you respond to that, and then they respond to that, and so on and so on. And guys, this is exactly how you want to structure your phrases on guitar, as a continual, cohesive, back and forth of ideas that respond to each other. Here's how you don't want your solos to sound. <laughs> Let's try putting it into practice. So I'm going to start by showing you an example of a super basic solo that perfectly demonstrates this call and response concept. So hopefully you noticed there how I really went out of my way to exaggerate where the questions and the answers are. When you ask someone a question, you more often than not put a little bit of an inflection at the end of the sentence, right? Just to ensure that the recipient really understands that what you're asking is in fact a question. What? You don't like beans? What's wrong with you? You can actually employ this into your playing too, which is a sick way to really strengthen your phrases and make them sound more like solid and harmonically strong. A really good rule of thumb you can use to start playing around with this is to ensure that you end all of your question phrases on the fifth of the key you're in and end your answers on the root of the key you're in. Right, so as an example, in the key of E minor, our root is the E, of course, and our fifth is the B. One, two, three, four, five, B. So we want to be ending our questions on a B note, and we want to be ending our answers on an E note. So our question could go something like this.
ending on the B note here. And our answer could go something like this. Ending on the E note. You hear how the B sort of like uh, is left hanging at the end of the question, but then at the end of the answer, we resolve it to our root note. But that's just one example. Another one that works really well is the third. So in this case, it's G. One, two, three. So we end our questions on a G, uh, but then we end our answers on an E still. So we could do a question like this. See, so we're ending on a G, which sort of like leaves it hanging. And then our answer to resolve it could go something like this. Going back home to our E. If you're not too keyed up in your theory and you weren't quite sure what I was talking about there, then I would highly recommend downloading my free music theory cheat sheet ebook from my guitar school. It explains all of these phrases and will get you up to speed on your music theory in no time at all. Right, so to give you guys a bit of practice getting into this call and response mindset, I've prepared a fun little exercise for you. I've recorded a series of question phrases over a pre-recorded backing track and purposefully, 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 purposefully excluded all of the answer phrases. So it's up to you to fill in the blanks. So have a play along and try and come up with some answer phrases that cohesively and strongly reply to all of the questions. If you're struggling with this, then I found it's a huge help to actually try and vocalize the questions. For example, if you're struggling and you're not really sure how to answer a phrase like this, let's say, then you would think in your head how you would vocalize this question, like try and put words to it. So for example, it could be, um, do you like beans on toast? Do you like beans on toast? So an answer to that could be, yes, I love beans on toast. Uh, so that could be like, um, yes, I like beans on toast. Do you like beans on toast? Yes, I like beans on toast. Alrighty, now here's the track. So from my experience working with students, it's not really the harmonic side of phrasing that people have trouble with, but actually the rhythmic side. It's so, so, so important to not underestimate the rhythmic aspect. Because after all, phrasing is 50% harmony and 50% rhythm. And to become good at phrasing, you have to be comfortable with both. So here's two solo examples. The first one will have awful rhythmic sense, and the second will have great rhythmic sense. So unlike harmony, rhythm is definitely something that's harder and less intuitive to learn. It's really easy to teach someone the notes of a scale, right? And to tell them, you know, how to play it. But trying to tell someone how to implement rhythmic variation into their playing, so it's, it's a lot harder. So what exactly is the best way to improve your rhythmic ryth rhythmicness? Easy, the same as every other aspect of creativity copy and learn from someone else. So something that I quite often do when coming up with lines and melodies and stuff is to simply just take the rhythm of another like well-known melody that I know and just incorporate it into mine. As a super basic example, let's take the melody of the chorus from Barbie Girl by Aqua. So the rhythm of that phrase goes something like this. I'm a Barbie girl. In a Barbie world, life in plastic, 
It is fantastic. So what I'm going to do is apply that rhythm of that phrase, but incorporate it into my own melody, right? So I'm taking my own melody, but using the rhythm of another melody. Let's try another example. Let's say the chorus to Metallica's Master of Puppets. That has a pretty cool rhythm, right? Master of Puppets, I'm pulling your strings, twisting your mind and smashing your dreams. So again, I'm gonna apply that rhythm, but to my own melody. Isn't it crazy how much a strong rhythm can really make a melody come to life? But that's not all. Once you have your rhythm applied to your melody, then you can enhance it by tarting it up a little bit. Like incorporating some hammer-ons and pull-offs, some legato, some sliding, just some nice like ornaments and articulation just to spice it up a little bit and make it more interesting. So let's say you've made a phrase that goes something like this. Which is fine, but I feel like it could be a bit more, I don't know, a bit more zazzy, right? We could like smarten it up a bit, make it a bit more dynamic. And so we could do that by adding in some extra like articulations and ornaments, such as hammer-ons and pull-offs, slides, bends. Uh, for example, the first bit, instead of just going up to the octave, we could sort of like bridge that gap. And just go up like the arpeggio, E minor. And instead of going to the 11 here, we could like bend up to it maybe. And the next bit. Maybe that sounds better sliding to it on the same string. Instead of going just like that, which is kind of plain, uh, we could slide up by staying on the same string, going from 14 to 16. So now that you know my super secret hack for applying existing rhythms to your own melodies, it's now your turn to try it for yourself. I want you to try applying rhythms from existing songs to your own melodies and see what you can come up with. I would absolutely love to know which songs you ended up picking, so please do let me know in the comments. And remember guys, that good phrasing can also be applied to fast technical playing, not just slow emotive playing. At the end of the day, phrasing is really just all about giving your solos structure and some semblance of order, rather than it just being like a big like rambling, incohesive mess that doesn't really go anywhere. And you absolutely can still apply this question and answer approach to more technical solos. But obviously when you start dealing with faster playing, then the whole idea of trying to like vocalize the question and answers doesn't really work right because you can't physically talk that fast. So instead, you need to think about your phrases as like building blocks, yeah? This entire solo that I'm about to show you is simply just comprised of lots of little blocks of phrases that are responding to each other. So guys, no matter what type of solo it is you're playing, there's absolutely no excuses. You should always be structuring it with this kind of call and response building block approach in mind, okay? But honestly guys, above all else, the number one thing you can do to improve your phrasing and honestly just your playing and musicianship in general is just to listen to as much music as possible and as many different types of music as possible. Your brain is like a big old sponge that's continually soaking up all of the musical information that you encounter throughout your life. So it's only logical, right, that the more musical information your brain has absorbed, then the more ideas you have to pull from when you play, right? Maybe you've experienced this too, but it's quite often the case when I sit down to write something or play something, improvise or whatever, um, I'm just in the middle of playing and then all of a sudden I just get this uh, like melody pop into my head that I haven't thought about uh, in like fucking 10, 15 years, which my brain is just something like, hey, hey you, you, you remember this obscure pop song you heard on holiday like years and years ago? Yeah, that melody from that song would actually sound pretty sick over that chord progression you're playing right now. And I'm like, oh yeah, 
Yeah, I guess it would. This is also the reason why, more often than not, the best improvisers in music are generally older individuals, simply because they've had more years of absorbing musical information. I absolutely guarantee that there's a direct positive correlation between the amount of music you listen to and your skills in phrasing, and not only that, but just your proficiency as a musician in general. So yeah, just always be listening to music as much as you can. Thank you so much, guys. I sincerely hope this lesson will help you on your way to phrasing mastery. Cheers, guys, and happy shredding. To get tabs, backing tracks, and a lesson for this video, as well as a sick selection of super fun guitar workouts, courses, eBooks, and weekly mentoring from me, then click the link in the description below to visit Bradley Hall's Guitar School and sign up today for free. Cheers, guys, and happy shredding.